Hey guys, welcome back to Nexus Core. I'm Richard, and I'm going to be showing you guys my premium Royal Paladin Alfred build, uh, which, uh, as you can already tell, focuses around the Tarna and getting multiple force markers in one turn. So yeah, let's just get right into it. So starting off with our starters tradition, we're running Bark Goal. Bark Goal's back. And that's all that matters in life right now. So Bartgol, whose skill is Forerunner, but uh, extremely spelled out for you, which is when another Royal Paladin rides this unit, you may call it to rear. So that's his first skill. The other skill is Act. Rest this unit. Search your deck up to one Future Knight, Lou, or Flogel, and call it to rear guard circle and shuffle your deck. So uh, everyone probably knows Bartgol at this point. You use Bartgol with... Lou and Flogel to Superior Ride Blaster Blade from your deck during your turn Grade 2 ride so that you can basically guarantee your ride and have Blaster Blade in the soul. So that's where we're running it. But most importantly, the reason why we're running Barkle is because Barkle was banned and now it is not. That is one of the most important reasons why we run Barkle. Next up, we're just going to go into Grade 3s with running four copies of King of Knights Alfred. So uh, this is an Alfred deck and we are running it focusing on gift markers. So we're just running all the Alfreds with markers that we can run. So uh, King of Knights Alfred's skill is act once per turn, count plus one, search your deck to one blaster blade and call it to rear guard circle. That unit gets plus 5,000 until the end of the turn, shuffle your deck. And its passive skill is continuous during your turn. If you have Blaster Blade on your rear guard circle, this gets plus 10,000 power. So, uh, the way it usually is is I, uh, if I have Tarna ready and I'm gonna I'm gonna do the Tarna turn, you can uh, do Alfred early first and then Superior right into this and already have the 10,000 as as if you have a gift marker, or vice versa. You can go into this, use. Uh, the counter last one to search for Blaster Blade and then go into Alfred and get another Blaster Blade if you want to fill up your field that way. So uh, either one works for the first turn ride. So that's why I really like the way this deck is built because it doesn't really matter which grade three you're on because you're going to be striding throughout the game. Uh, it's just they both have Alfred in the name and they both have really good skills. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So the other Alfred is... Alfred Early from the Aichi Sendo Trial Deck. Excuse me. So Alfred's skill is Auto. When placed on Vanguard Circle, count plus one, call up to one Blaster Blade from your hand or soul, and call it to rear, and it gets 10,000 until the end of turn. If you called it, draw a card. So typically, like I mentioned before, I go into, if I can, I go into uh, this first by writing, get the gift marker, put it somewhere, usually on our rear guard circle, get the draw. Uh, if I'm going first, uh, call Tarna, pull out King of Knights Alfred, ride it, get another gift marker, put it over here, uh, yada yada, give Vanguard 10k from its own skill, and start getting my plays going. So this deck obviously shines when you go first. Uh, real quick, I'll just go over it now. If you are going second, um, if you want to go right into the Tarna plays, if you feel like that's the best decision, go ahead and do so. But I would suggest kind of start racking up with your striding and kind of wait for the Tarna turns till it's like you're at the game state where you feel like it's going to be your win condition for getting all those force markers on rear and, and swinging with twin drive won't feel as much as, an, as a deterrent for the turn. So that's why I still like the way the deck functions. So... I'll just start off with Tarna right away for the grade twos. So we're running four copies of Undulter, Undulatory Sage Tarna. So the way this card is worded is that uh, it's a peer rides Alfred from the deck, and since it is being ridden, you you still get to uh, obtain the gift marker. So Tarna's skill is when this is placed on rear guard circle, if you have a grade three Vanguard with Alfred in its name, and all your Vanguards are standing. Search your deck for up to one card with Alfred in its name, write it as stand, shuffle your deck, and that unit gets plus 5,000 until the end of turn. So you are not able to use this uh, skill if you are on a G unit because your G unit is grade 4, not grade 3. Um, so that's why a lot of people uh, typically don't 
see this card is that beneficial since you cannot use its skill while you're on a G unit and since you're going to be on G units for most of premium you kind of get the idea but the reason this I feel like this card is really important for this deck is because uh, premium doesn't have much else to offer for Royal Paladin other than striding and getting a bunch of resources but because gift markers give your columns 10,000 power getting multiple in one turn especially if you can stack it all on one column with your blaster blade and then since you have access to floor pallet and flogel restanding that blaster blade etc it's just something the fact that it's also free is really nice as well so the deck excels great when you go first when you go second you kind of have to take a step back think about what you're going to be doing and then kind of work from there but if you're going first and you got tarna just just go for it next up we're running four copies of the Wind Condition, which is Blaster Blade. So Blaster Blade skill is if you have four more rearguards in the Vanguard Circle, this gets plus crit. Uh, you're not going to be using that skill that often, probably never, so don't really worry about that. The other skill is Van or Rearguard Circle, and this is placed uh, Count Plus One, Soul Plus One. Choose one of your opponent's rearguards in the front row and retire it. So that's really important if you're going to play against decks. Sorry about that. I'm in like a little hiccup. Uh, uh, getting rid of front row units that might be key that your opponent needs. Um, you have a lot of access to Count Bless and Soul Bless in this deck. So, especially because you're going to be rewriting your grade threes over and over again, um, Soul is not an issue at all in this deck. So, you can decide when you feel is best to use Boss Blade skill, but you don't have to really feel like you're running low on resources when you use it. The most important thing, let me just go right back into it real quick, is that his name is Blaster Blade, and this is the car that's going to be winning the game that turn. So, you always want to have a Blaster Blade accessible. So next up for the Grade 2s, I am running two copies of Swordsman of Light Blaster Javelin La Rouge, which is kind of a, whoa, what are you doing, Richard? Why are you running this card? Um... I decided to run it because I am running uh, Pack Goal in the deck. I'm running Pack Goal just because the deck does kind of run out of Counter Blast pretty quick, depending on how aggressively you're playing. I also like the fact that um, this card is essentially helping you search out your Flogals as well, your Floral Pout and Flogals. And Floral Pout and Flogal, I'll just pull it up right here. Floral Pout and Flogal is the card that's going to be helping you restand your Blaster Blades. And if you got Blaster Blade with a bunch of gift markers on it if he's got a bunch of gift markers on him and he's swinging for like 30 or 40 by himself and you know you can use Flogo, restand it do it again and again and again and since Flogo puts itself back into the deck you can use uh javelin the Rouge to pull him back out so let's go over his skill so javelin the Rouge, uh skill is choose two cards from your hand and put them into your soul that, that cost really sucks. I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, when this unit is placed on rear, if you have a Vanguard Alfred in its name, pay the cost, search for your deck for two high beasts, call them to open rear guard circles, shuffle your deck. So that's really important. Pay attention to the open part because that might be the difference between your misplays and you winning the game. So I already explained the reason I'm running this card. It's to throw it down, fish out those flogals, and win the game. That's basically it. So Flogal Blaster Blade is your is what you're trying to win with. Uh, since we are trying to find all these key cards to win the game, I decided to run two copies of Star Hope Trumpeter. Uh, Star Hope Trumpeter is really good uh, because it's the only card in the deck that has a GB cost. So, and since we're going to be striding as soon as we can, we're not really worried about the GB cost. So Star Hope Trumpeter's skill is. Uh, Generation Break 1, when this is placed on Rear Guard Circle from hand, Count Blast 1, if you have a Vanguard with Blaster or Alfred in its name, search your deck for up to one card and call it to rear and it gets plus 3k. So our search targets are going to be cards like Javelin the Rouge, or even Floral Pod and Flogel itself, or Blaster Blade, if we're missing a Blaster Blade in our hand and we can't really search it out. So I decided I wanted to run Starhawk Trumpeter instead of um, Myth, Mithril Guard, or something, I keep forgetting the name, but um, the reason I'm 
decided to run this is because the other grade two, uh, when you call it, you can only search for other grade twos in your deck. So your only target would really be Blaster Blade. And maybe if you just started your grade three turn, you're not striding, you can search for Tarna. But for the early, for the most part, the, the grade two doesn't really have much other search targets. And yeah, you can search for Lurus, but I feel like also like if the one card that I need for this combo is Pack Goal and I can't pay the cost for LaRouche if I've got like one card in my hand, maybe whatever reason, uh, I can use this to search for Pack Goal. Just search for the one card I'm looking for. The fact that uh, she also gives the called target 3k, so if I call Blaster Blade, give it 3k, swings for 13 on its own. If it's on double gift marker, that's 33. That hits um, Force Gift. Give my force vanguard base 13k base numbers. The plus 3k 3k can help at certain moments, and the skill only costs kind of plus one, so really helpful. Just searches for any target that you're looking for in the deck. So, decided to run two of it for the grade ones. I am running four stride fodder. I'm debating on this because I was running three, and three seemed to be fine. But uh, because you're going to be rewriting your grade 3s over and over and over from the deck, um, you might not draw into them to pay cost for stride. So running more stride fodder at least helps you guarantee that you'll stride with minimal cost from your hand. Uh, we're not using the, the alt mile skill. So the only skill we're focusing on is hand. Uh, when you're paying the cost of stride, this gets grade plus 2. So four copies of that. We're running four copies of Little Sage Marin because the card is really good. Uh, Little Sage Marin skill is when your other rear guard uh, in the same column as this is placed, uh, count plus one, draw a card, and this gets 3k. So this helps fill your hand. And since we got Counter Blast to spare, just go for it. So really good card. It's essentially just you throw it down, and every time something gets put here, draw, draw, draw. Um, Kagura is going to be retiring this because of how good it is. Um, I'm running three, but uh, you can up it to four uh, if you want to kind of mimic my build and start messing around with the grade one lineup. This card's really good, so if you really have to cut something to up something else up, up uh, they'll Sage Marin up to four if you want. So next for good ones, we're running three copies of Pack Goal. This is one of the examples I was talking about. If you want to down Pack Goal to two and then up Marin to one, that's an option. Uh, I'm running three. Peckle's skill is when placed on rear, soul blast two if you do counter charge two. We have plenty of soul in this deck because Bark Goal fills your soul. You're rewriting over and over and over again. Javelin is putting cards from your hand into your soul, unfortunately. So you got plenty of soul. So you can run as much as this card. You could run four, but I, I just stick to three max. Um, Run this because if you're going to set up for your kill turn with your floral pod and flogles, you want to have at least three counter blasts open or four if you're going to be using uh, the Geonite Alfred for the counter blast cost and such. So, the reason I'm running three is if I'm running two and uh, one goes to damage zone, then I only got one in the deck and I'm going to like, oh, I can only use it that one turn. It's got to be my push. Having three makes me feel a little more comfortable uh, with my deck. So I feel like I don't have to worry about my resources, and I can just play it pretty casually. So that's why I'm running four. I mean, three. Counting is hard. Uh, this last one is kind of weird. Um, I'm Yeah, let's just show it to you guys. I decided to run three of that really garbage promo that came in the set. Snow, snow Oogle. Not Snow Goal. Snow Oogle. I am running Snow Oogle because... Uh, it's just a high beast target. It also has the 10k shield, which is what I'll use for Marin's uh, search target for G-guarding. But for the most part, let's say I would want to call a Roosh and I just need one Flogal or one Pack Goal. And for the other target, I just want a booster. I can call out Snowgull as one of the boosters. And because Snowgull's skill kind of helps uh, gain back the cost I had to play for LaRouche if it hits. So Snow Oogle's skill is when the attack is when the attack it boosts 
hits the Vanguard, Soul Blast 1, return this to your hand. So getting cards back in your hand is nice. The fact, the reason I feel this card doesn't really neg as much in this deck is because, you, like I said before, you have plenty of soul in this deck, especially if you call it out with Javelin, you guarantee have soul in the deck to pay. So you can call it out. Uh, if the attack hits when you this boosts, you soul bless one, putting it back in your hands, so now you, you got a hand back. And of course, you know, pulling out cards from your deck that aren't triggers is really nice for LaRousse. I decided to run it because it made sense. Uh, before I was running Wingle for the same reason, it's a high beast and I just needed some type of buffer booster and some type of shield for the skill and I thought I'd put it primarily behind Blaster Blade to help because you know it's the wing condition. I decided to go with Snow because it seems more consistent, especially if the attack does hit, Soul Blast, get it back, gets you hand. Uh, slight, slight pressure for your opponent, not that big a deal, but I'm, I'm running the card. Seems like a pretty decent thing to do. On to grade zeros. One copy of Lou. We're only wearing one copy because if this thing dies, we're just we're just not doing the bark the barkle combo. <laughs> Dropping cards here. So running the one copy of Lou because uh, you fish it out immediately with Barkle skill and then you're done. You just gotta fish out one of your other flogles to do uh, its own skill, the Search for Blaster Blade. So Future Knight Lou has the skill, act kind of plus one, choose a unit named Future Knight Lou, Barkle, and Flogel from your guard circle and put them into your soul. If you have a grade one Vanguard, search your deck for Blaster Blade, ride it, and shuffle your deck. So it guarantees you grade two ride. Um, Barkle was banned for the reason of gaining soul really quickly for uh, BTO2 Soul Saver. And then it stayed banned because Thing Saver, basically because you filled the soul super quick. That's why Barkle was banned. Um, so I'm running it because we do get soul. Guaranteeing your grade two is nice because that way you don't really have to worry about grade lock as much. Um, uh, the only thing that does suck if you are playing against Kagro, you rest this, search for Lou, they'll ride Berserk Dragon, snipe this. You can play around it uh, however you feel, but um, for the most part, if one of these two die uh, when I start off my turn, I just ride my normal grade two that I'll set up for and just kind of continue from there. So Barkle's main purpose is just to guarantee my grade two ride, so not much to worry about there. Um, alternatives to grade zeros, you could run the Alfred grade zero, but I feel like you, you have to wait to get to Alfred to even use it. And, you know, it's kind of whatever at that point. but. You can decide to run it. I decided to run Barkle just because the card used to be banned, so he's back. We're running three copies of Floral Paladin Flogel. Uh, I'm not running four because that would mean I'd have to cut down my other triggers. Um, and since these old triggers still only give the 5k bonus and the newer triggers like Flogel give 10,000, I don't want to be losing that uh, 5,000 just for the extra sh skill. Um, you can debate on that if you want, if it's more value to have the skill than the trigger, it's up to you. Um, so Floral Paladin Flogel skill is combo plus one. At the end of the battle that your unit with Blaster Blade and the same attack, the Vanguard, pay the cost if you do, choose up to one of your units with Blaster Blade, stand it, and return this to your deck, shuffle your deck. So it's just really good card because you're just, your Blaster Blade was just gonna have force markers on it Swinging for big numbers, you use the skill, kind of blast, return it to deck, swing again, do it again, do it again. So this card can basically be your win condition if you have a crit on it and you're just swinging, swinging, swinging. So uh, Floral Pot and Flogul is really good and you should run it in your premium deck if you're going to have four Blaster Blades. Uh, search target for LaRouche as we talked about because it is a high beast and yeah, puts itself back in the deck so you always can see it more and more and more for triggering. Next up, we are running four copies of Flogel because it is a search target for Barkle. Helps meet the requirement for Bar for a Future Knight lose skill to Superior Ride Blaster Blade. It is a high beast um, and it gives 10k and has 15k shield. So we're going to be running four of this trigger. Uh, next up, I'm going to be running four copies of Flash Shield 
eSalt. Uh, the only uh, negative thing about this I can say is that if I do play against Oracle Think Tank with I Ichi Kashima, I always like say that wrong if I say it too fast, um, with Silent Tom being that you can't guard at all, uh, kind of sucks. So even without Silent Tom, the fact that Ichi, Kash Ichi Kashima says that you can't guard with grade zeros or G Guardians means that you can't PG or use any of your G Guardians kind of sucks, but that's against the one clan, Oracle Think Tank. Uh, filling in the spots with my with my grade one lineup with PGs just to counter that one matchup means A, I have to have the PG in my hand, uh, B, I'm losing four slots out of my grade one lineup that I don't want to lose, and you know, against any other deck, I don't really have to worry about that, so I'd rather just stick with the draw trigger that has the skill versus running vanilla draws because of I'm scared of a single matchup. So until we play against Ichi Kashima um, Premium, I'm not going to be too worried about how I'm going to play with this build. So I'm going to be running for the Flash Shield Assault Perfect Guards. So that's what I'm going to go with. Last but not least, for main deck, well. How'd that get there? Four copies of the new Yggdrasil Mating Elaine. I'm running the newer heal because um, while the shield value doesn't matter because I'll be discarding it for G Guardian, uh, the important thing is that the 10,000 you know, power that you're going to be giving from trigger checking is really important, especially since my deck um, runs four triggers that only give 5k. Um, so I really want to take advantage of the 10k trigger that I can give, especially since my deck is focusing on powering up my columns to be as big as possible. So I really want to have that. And since I'm and since the other heal triggers with skills uh, focus on counter charge, the other one I'd be running would be Remedy Angel, which focuses on counter charging and since or soul charging. And since I have plen plenthra of soul, plenthra of counter charging, thanks to Pack Goal. I'm not really too worried about it, so I've, I want to get the power from the trigger. We are 20 minutes into this mess. Jesus, all right. Um, we're running eight gift markers. You're only going to use, like, four or five. But I just run eight just because we run eight grade threes. G-Zone! Two copies of Holy Divine Knight, Gancelot, Peace Saver. Uh, when it attacks, counter charge one. Um... You have to have Alfred or Blaster or Heart. Uh, counter charge one and drive plus one. And then if you have a card face up in your G zone, this gets a crit. And then importantly, uh, continuous G zone. When this is face up in your G zone, all your rear guards with Blaster Blade and their card name get resist during your turn. So you can't get Nanao, Griffin, or Hedo around when you got that 40k Blaster Blade swinging. Uh, four copies of. Divine, Knight, King, Alfred, Holy, Saver. Uh, skill, GB2, count plus one, flip a copy of its face up. Uh, if you have a heart with Alfred or a blaster, you you know pay the cost because you can't if you don't. And then choose one of your regards with Blaster Blade in its name, and you give it 3k, and during its first battle of the turn, it gets Wind Drive. So, you know, you can have that Blaster Blade with a bunch of force, you know, markers swinging for like 33 or 43 with Twin Drive. That's pretty cool. That can probably help you win the game, so we're going to run four copies of it. Uh, two copies of Ail Divine Knight Altmile because searching for a grade two for free is amazing. Uh, you can search for Blaster Blade. You can search for LaRouche to help you fill your field. So this is like our, oh, I need to find that one grade two that I need to win the game. Let's go into Ariel. Uh, skill is um, when placed on Van, flip a copy of itself face up. Your front row gets 3k, and then if you have if you have um, two or more cards face up in your G zone, uh, search for a grade two from your deck, call it, and then the call unit gets uh, 5k. So free, free plusin right there. One copy of the GB8 uh, Avalon, Generation Break 8. When this attacks, a Vanguard, Count Blast 1. Search your deck for up to five cards, call them a separate rear. They get plus 4k, and this unit gets a crit. So just game ender, like all the other GB8s, basically. Um, one copy of um, Xeroth Dragon of Zenith Peak Ultima for Mimi plays. Uh, you guys know Xeroth Dragons. It's uh, when you stride into them, if you 
uh, don't win that turn, you lose your G-Zone. But because the only card that requires GB1 in this deck is Starhawk Trumpeter, we're not really too worried about that. But not being able to stride also sucks. Or G-Guard. Uh, skill, when this is placed, uh, Kind of Blast 2, search for four cards from your deck, um, put call two of them to rear, and then put the other two on the top of your deck, and for the whole turn, all your units receive the same trigger power-up. So there's no such thing as two to pass or two to pass in this deck because all your triggers will be getting the same effects. Yeah, so Xerox Dragon for end game play, search for Blaster Blade and a Flogo or something, put like two crits on the top of your deck, swing, put, put everything everywhere and just try and win the game. Um, for my tech, I'm running one copy of Golden Knight Gleaming Flame Garmore. For a serious reason, the reason I'm running this card is for its GB2 skill, uh, for its cost, which is choose a card from your drop zone, put it on the bottom of your deck, and then you reveal the top six cards, and for each hype beast among them, you give a unit 3k. There are four or more, this gets a crit. The other skills don't matter. Um, the reason we're running this is because Blaster Blade is pretty important in your deck, and a lot of other cards like Flogals are important. So if I am missing one of my key pieces and I need to fish it out, and I can use like Star Hope Trumpeter or LaRouche to fish it out, but I don't have it in the deck to do so, I can just stride into Garmore, use its cost to put the card in my drop zone back in the bottom of my deck, and then the card's back in my deck. So that's the main reason I run the card. Um, it's super like a panic button kind of thing, I guess, if like I'm going to try to win this turn and I just need that one card and it might win me the game. We run like four, seven, ten, like there's not that many high beasts in this deck, so you know I mean the main deck, and since you're going to be pulling a lot of them out of your deck, you might not see them in your deck for the skill, but getting the 4k might be nice. You might stack it on the blaster blade and make it 14k in, or like I don't know, you might call Star Hope, and then you might call Blaster Blade, and then you might use its skill, and now this is gets plus 7k total, and it swings for 17 or 27 to 37 against those Excel and Protect decks. I don't know, that's just something that came off the top of my head. G Guardians. Jesus, almost 30 minutes. Um, Mask Goal. Uh, generation Break 1. Uh, choose a face down, G Guardian, flip the face up. When this is placed on Guard Circle, if you have a card in your front row that gets plus 10k shield, running this to help fuel for GB8 really quickly, and it's a free cost if you got a front row unit for that 10k for the 38k defense. Really good card. Now, the really important card, which is Little Great Sage Marin, which is if you have a Blaster Alfred Vanguard, uh, when this is placed, Soul Blast 1. Uh, search your deck for a grade one or higher. Call it to guard circle and it gets plus five. That card called gets plus five K and then you shuffle your deck. So this helps you deck thin essentially because you pull out non-triggers out of your deck and then it gets plus shield. And since all the grade ones now have these nice big old 10K shields, they can guard for really big numbers. Um, because Masco requires front row rear guards, if you don't got front row rear guards, Marin's your good backup choice for that. So run two of it. Last but not least, to run Dark Element Dismal. This is mostly here for the flip fodder for Masco, but it can also be important if you're playing against decks that are that you know are going to be targeting your Blaster Blade, or against people that just want to swing at Blaster Blade just to kill it. You can play Dismal, protect Blaster Blade, and now you guarantee your win condition for the next turn, or you're basically the card that you want to keep. And then Dismal is also there if you play against VMAX for whatever reason. You're just like, uh, you can't get your skill off. Wow, okay, we're done. Ooh, um, let me know what you guys think about my deck. Uh, let me know what you guys think about uh, this card right here. You know, that's, that's some funny plays right there. Uh, I'm not going to brag about this too much, but I did play this deck in a tournament. Only four people entered, and um, that's just because everyone wanted to play standard, so not really going to use that as a reference. But um, I had fun for the most part, and I think that's... The most important thing that matters to be honest so i had fun playing with the deck and uh you guys can try it out and hope you guys have fun too so i'm richard and i'll see you all next time